Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, your friendly neighborhood administrative associate, uh, Danny Salazar here from uh, Connection Christian Church. Uh, as you can see, I am down here uh, at the Eagles Club for the uh, week nine final recording of this series. Um, if you hear a uh, drill in the background, uh, don't be too bothered by that. That's just the sound of our uh, audio, video, streaming uh, presence becoming that much more stronger. So I had originally was going to film outside uh, by a dam, but it was windy and uh, probably starting to rain again. So I was going to, you know, film later or maybe uh, edit it out to where it'd be acceptable. Um, and Mike told me he's going to be down here with uh, Mark over here to do some uh, do some work and uh I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to go ahead and crash your party and uh, film here. So a few things I kind of want to talk about before we get uh, too much started here. Uh, just some people to recognize um, and thank as we uh, as we get started. Um, Pastor Mike has done an awesome job editing the videos and receiving those and making those look good. Um, definitely not my strong suit, but his. So uh, uh, be praying for him. Uh, we're grateful for him that he was able to step up and do that. Um, also grateful for the other uh, four guys who have been uh, in this as well, um, putting in a lot of hours and uh, a lot of studying. And um, the goal always was to get uh, people in the Word. And for me, what success looked like was if one person uh, who wasn't reading the Bible every day starts reading the Bible every day because of what we're doing, I would definitely consider that a win. And if that's you, uh, drop a note in the comment section and let us know. We want to celebrate that. So. Um, we are in Mark chapter 15 today. We're going to do verses 1 through 20. We'll be talking about Jesus' trial and his mocking and, uh, you know, kind of how that relates to our lives. Before we do that, I'm going to say a quick word of prayer. Uh, Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for your word and your sacrifice, Lord. And I uh, thank you for um, Pastor Mike and for everybody who's uh, who's uh, helped out with the series and uh Pray for their families. Lord, I pray that you just illuminate your word this morning, that you would teach us what you want us to know. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So again, we are in Mark. Yes, I love the, the Bible app. I'm using the app today. So we are in Mark chapter 15. Uh, I'm going to use a different version than what I'm used to using. I normally use out of the ESV. Uh, sometimes I use the NIV. So I'm using the NLT. Um, I think the events that are talked about here are, uh, I think the way that they tell the story is, is pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and use that today. Chapter 15, verse one, very early in the morning, the leading priests, the elders and the teachers of the law, the entire high council met to discuss their next step. They bound Jesus, led him away and took him to Pilate, the Roman governor. So this Jesus that they had celebrated not 48 hours earlier uh, has been saying some radical things. He's been doing some radical things and he wasn't who they thought he was or what their idea of him was going to be. So uh, they arrest him and they bring him to the governor. Verse two, Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, you have said it. Then the leading priests kept accusing them of many crimes. And Pilate asked them, aren't you going to answer them? What about all these charges they're bringing against you? But Jesus said nothing, much to Pilate's surprise. See, the thing about Jesus is that, you know, when you're sinless, you're not going to lie. And uh, Jesus definitely didn't want to perjure himself. So he's not guilty of being these things that they were saying. Bible doesn't really go into detail of what they were accusing him of, but my guess is that these uh, law scholars, so to speak, were trying to throw the book at him, tried to get uh, him in trouble any way, shape, or form, uh, just because, you know, they're not getting their way. Now, it was the governor's custom each year during the Passover celebration to release one prisoner, any one the people requested. One of the prisoners at that time was Barabbas, a revolutionary who had committed murder in an uprising. The crowd went to Pilate and asked him to release the prisoner as usual. Would you like me to release to you this king of the Jews? Pilate asked. 
for he realized by now that the leading priests had arrested Jesus out of envy. But at this point, the leading priests stirred up the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas instead of Jesus. Pilate asked them, Then what should I do with this man you call king of the Jews? And they shouted back, Crucify him. Why, Pilate demanded. What crime has he committed? But the mob roared even louder, Crucify him. So to pacify the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He ordered Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip and then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. So what we basically see here is this interaction between the priests, the religious experts, the lawyers, so to speak, and uh, Pilate. And Pilate knows what he did was wrong. He got it. He understood that Jesus wasn't guilty, but he uh, bent to the will of the crowd. So my question is, have you ever been in a situation where you knew something was wrong and you had the opportunity to do the right thing, yet you went with the crowd? Has that ever happened? And what are you going to do next time you're faced with that? Are you going to go with the crowd or are you going to go with Jesus and do the right thing? Verse 16. The soldiers took Jesus into the courtyard to the governor's headquarters and called out the entire regiment. They dressed him in a purple robe and they wove thorn branches into a crown and put it on his head. Then they saluted him and taunted, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him on the head with a reed stick, spit on him, and dropped to their knees in mock worship. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the purple robe and put on his own clothes on him again. Then they led him away to be crucified. So again, we're basically seeing Jesus' court date. He has accusations. Uh, he didn't really get much of a chance to answer to him. Uh, and he was basically thrown to the wolves, mob rule. Um, it's tough because it's humiliating. Like, not only did he suffer, uh, you know, these beatings that were not pleasant, um, it had to be, it just, had, it didn't have to, it couldn't feel well, couldn't feel good. And he endured that for us. And so we have a choice to make. What do we do with Jesus? Do we go with the crowd, with the world, and reject him? Or do we go all in? And that's my question for you today. It's been my question this whole entire Mark Devo series. It always seems to be a theme of which side of the line are you on? Are you going to go with Jesus all the way to the cross? Or are you going to leave him? What's that look like in your life? You know, maybe you've not taken that step. And today I'd like to invite you to do that. Um, drop us a message, drop a comment. We would love to get you plugged in to uh, learn how to follow Jesus, to get involved in the local church, to uh, fellowship with other believers, to um, serve, to make disciples. You know, life changed really fast for everybody. We all had to adapt. And so we gave you an opportunity every day you know, weekday to get into the word. And what I hope is that we helped you get into that habit and hopefully that's something you keep up. So I know for me, um, I'm looking forward to the next series. I don't know when that's going to be. Uh, watch your, uh, your Facebook and um, connectionchristianchurch.com. We'll have the information for that. Um, in the meantime, I'd encourage you to get a Bible app and, uh, you know, whatever you're dealing with, it's there and uh, find a plan to go through. And if you want accountability on that plan, uh, reach out to one of us, and uh, we'd love to use that app and, and uh, link our stuff up and, and, and go through that with you. Definitely. Um, yeah, so I hope uh, you're well. You know you're loved. And uh, I, uh, I do hope to see you this Sunday. Um, we are uh, meeting in person again, and at least 
three, if not all five of us, are going to be sharing the stage with uh, Pastor Mike. We're going to be talking about uh, what we've learned. Um, he's not really giving us too much of a preview of the interview questions, so uh, be prepared for some off-the-cuff stuff, I'm sure. It'll be a great day. Um, can't wait to uh, uh, be in person uh, in this building here. Um, happy to be back. And uh, even though uh, we're back, you know, normal is never going to be normal again. And uh, we're embracing that. I hope you're embracing that too. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Love you. Peace.